The year was 1954. With their sturdy, broken-down microphones, they were headed for greatness in the American West. Jack and Ron in the morning. If you don't laugh like this, you're probably normal. The following entertainment special contains mature subject matter. Parents may consider some of the program content unsuitable for children. Parental discretion is advised. of radio. Here's Jack and Ron. Thank you. Hey, hey, we're here. We took last Monday off because uh, our producer Richard was in Maui. Uh, I don't know what he was doing there, but he was in Maui and apparently had a good time. Why didn't he take us? I don't know. You know, we could have done our podcast from Maui. It was extremely quiet, or at least he was extremely quiet about his whereabouts and the fact that he was going to be gone. He told us he'd be gone, so we couldn't do the podcast last week. Uh However, he never mentioned that, oh, yeah, I'm going to Maui. Guys, want to come with? So anyway, uh, he came back with all kinds of stories and all kinds of, uh, you know, happiness. Uh, Did he bring us any souvenirs? Not a damn one. Not even a conch shell. I don't, nothing. Yeah, you could have gone down to the beach and just reached down and picked that up. Yeah. Come on, brother. Or a dead jellyfish. Come on, man. I think they say it's against the law to bring stuff back. Oh, it's against it's the law to bring, bring stuff? Back. Yeah. Yeah, you believe that crap. Yeah, how many, how many times do you believe that law has been broken? <laughs> yeah. how, many, how many times have you crossed state lines huh? <laughs> with contraband and other... Uh, you Thank know, you. Th- yeah. Uh-huh. Come on, work with us, man. Yeah. Work with us, Richard. Work with us. All right. It's Jack Elliott, Ron Williams. Jack Dam Elliott, Ron Dam Williams, the number one video podcast in America. Thanks for checking it out. Be sure to share this video podcast with everybody on your Facebook page. You know, all your friends. Uh, you've got a lot of friends or relatives and what have you, a pet parrot or whoever. Share our podcast with them. Let them know we're here doing this. We do it every week on Monday, 1 o'clock Central Time from Othello's Italian Restaurant right here in Edmond, Oklahoma. They've got another location, Campus Corner in Norman, Oklahoma as well. Great food, too. And by the way, I got to mention, about a week and a half ago, I came to uh, Othello's for a special event. They had Othello's Sicilian Wine Dinner, a chef's taste of Sicily. Oh, was it good. It was like, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, six. It was a six-course meal. And I'm telling you what, it started out with... uh, an appetizer course of caponata. I guess that's the wine. And it and it featured <laughs> Arancini Farmaggio and Risotto Aragasta, which is fried stuffed ricotto paired with a creamy lobster risotto. Oh my god. And then the the wine for that was a Stomari Cabernet Sauvignon. Well, how about that? For a beer drinking guy, I got to say that Purdue. And here's my deal. I'm not a wine guy, but they had a different wine for each of the uh, courses. Uh, each uh, And every wine matched up perfectly. It was so good. They're doing it again, by the way, and this time they're going to do it in Norman. It's an original Othello Sicilian wine dinner, and all the wines are actually imported from Sicily. And the cool thing is, after you've tried the wines at the uh, at the dinner, you can purchase the wines there on site. Very cool. I'm trying to look here and see what one of the uh, entrees was. One of the courses was a, oh, the pasta course was a, a rigatoni di pistachio, a pasta with a spist- uh, pist- uh, pistachio sauce. Oh, my God. And I'm telling you what, it was all so good. Uh, I, I wish you would have been there. It well, was, if I'd known. Well, well, now. I think we mentioned it on the uh, podcast a couple of weeks ago that they were doing it. A couple, anyway. of, couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, well, see, well it, it, it could have been a phone call, but that's that's okay. You know, I, yeah. I've I've uh, I've gone it on was and great. I, I, I realized things happen. Well, it was good, and they've got another one coming up. Be sure to check. Uh, Othello's has a Facebook page and a website. You can check it out and see. They'll probably post the date that they're going to do the next one. Yeah, well, that's, that's interesting. I, yeah. I just thought my, my buddy would kind of, you know, Pick up the phone and say, "Hey, man, we're on our way down there." Here was the pro- and here was the problem. By the time I got in <laughs> on the uh, on the package, yeah. it was sold out. Ah, yeah, okay. So uh, they had a house full of people here. I'm telling you, uh, yeah, it was how, great. Well, how much was the package? I, uh, that that, that I may have a lot bad. to do to, uh, well, to let me know if I'm going you, next time or not. Uh, it wasn't bad. It was somewhere in the neighborhood of 85, something like that. Oh, uh, a person. But I mean, like, a person. 
Yeah. Okay. All the wine, all the... I, I don't remember the price. I really don't. Okay. But it was probably in that neighborhood. So oh, it was okay. well worth it, I promise you. And we were... It took us two and a half hours to eat it all. It was phenomenal. Uh, by the way, we've got a website, too. No to-go box? Jackandron.com. <laughs> J-A-C-K-A-N-D-R-O-N.com. Check oh. out our website. Uh, I also want to mention Flash Holler. Flash Holler is a major sponsor of this podcast. Um, and, of course, we're now on Apple Podcast, uh, iHeartMedia Podcast, Spreaker, TuneIn, Spotify, and a whole lot more. Every platform you can think of, you look for us, you'll find us. No doubt about it. Flash Holler, by the way, is a company that much like Uber, Uber moves people, Flash Holler moves merchandise. Mm -hmm. Washers, dryers, sofas, and they do a whole lot more. And they do a whole lot more thanks to their merging with Mom and Dad's house. That's right, Mom and Dad's house. If you're downsizing or move to... Uh, uh, to senior living, you, you need to sell your house first. Your headaches of moving too much stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Sure. Worried about making repairs before selling your house. Well, tell you what. Mom and dad's house, they will go ahead and take care of that for you. You don't have to do anything but put your purse on your shoulders, your wallet in your pocket or whatever, and drive to wherever you're going to be living from then on. But just that simple. It's so simple. Contact Flash Holler. Go to their yes. website. Flashholler.com, F L A S H O L R.com, Flashholler.com. Tell you more about them here in just a little bit, but we've got so much more to get to. I wanted to mention one other, uh, you know, we talk about restaurants a lot, and we mentioned Louis because Louis is a big supporter of the podcast as well. Um, but there's a restaurant that opened about two or three months ago, and it's called 74. It's actually, if you look them up online, it's Enjoy 74. But 74 is over. Off of Classen, it's on the south. It's on Classen, south of Wilshire, and it's set back off the road to the east. Um, and and it's a friend by the name of Hunan. Hunan owns it, and uh, Hunan's got this incredible chef, Bo Stevenson, who, if you know, you're around Oklahoma City restaurants and restaurant tours, you know, Bo Stevenson's a phenomenal. Hey, all of a sudden, I cut out. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm, I'm no longer on. Ron is on. Yeah, I'm on right here. Oh, I'm yeah. still on? Okay, sorry. I just cut out in my headphones for a moment. All right, I'm good. Anyway, <laughs> 74, go check it out. And check out the pizza. I'm telling you what, the pizza is freaking great. Get a sausage pizza or a pepperoni pizza at 74. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. They've got some other things on the menu, too. The turkey steak is great. The uh, Oh... The chuck roast, really good. Anyhow. I'll, I'll check the, that address and make sure I have everything before uh, before we get out of here. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'd like to say hello to Patty Stowers. Uh, she's watching. Our buddy, Mike Fields, uh, from the Oklahoma Heart Hospital Cardiac Rehabilitation Facility. Jeez, All right. Man. Uh, Is he over there right now? Yeah, he's he's checking it. He's checking us out right okay. now from that, wow. from that hospital. Hey, we wish you the best, man. No yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. So uh, thanks to uh, thanks to these folks for being on uh, on board with us. Be sure to share the podcast with everybody you know. I had something else I was going to mention, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, that's it too bad. The, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter. We'll get to <laughs> we'll get to everything here in just a little bit. I promise. We got to get asinine trivia out of the way, but first we do two tough trivia. Let's do it right now. All right. This is going to be in the sort of remembrance of the week that we weren't here. Okay. Very well. <laughs> The three most popular songs, as far as being played, the three most played songs in America. White Christmas, Yesterday, and Back That Thing Up. No, um... <laughs> <laughs> That's only at your house. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Bottom Girls by by Queen. Uh, am I close at all? Do I have any of them? Oh, you're you're close yeah. to, to, to some perversion. But <laughs> uh, was it no. is, is the what's that Mariah Carey Christmas song? Oh yeah, all I want for Christmas is you. Yeah, yeah. And written by Dolly Parton. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it's it's not the. It's, it's not, not on the list. It's not in the top three. Like I said, the top three. I said most white played Christmas songs in America. White Christmas, is, yesterday, and Happy Birthday. Those are the three. Any Michael Jackson songs up there? No. Want to be starting something? No. Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. Well, I was listening to the conversation back and forth, back and forth, and uh, one of you got one of them right. Ah. And I know who it is. Yep. I didn't say any. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. 
Okay, so that uh, question will be answered at the end of this podcast about uh, 50 minutes from right now. Keep thinking about it. I'm sure people will be Googling and uh, looking it all up. Well, how about something that uh, everyone can, I don't know, sit in judgment on as far as uh, uh, trivia is concerned? Asinine trivia. Asinine. Why don't we do that? Yeah. That, what we came up with years ago to make uh, loves those. our loves giveaways them. easy because a lot of times they'd give us really crap prizes to give away, and we didn't feel like we needed to tax anybody's brain oh. too severely to give away some Here's of this some crap. some pencil erasers, right, and yeah. you put them on the pencil. you got to buy the pencil now, but this pencil eraser goes right on top. Yeah. <laughs> or a 10% discount to Chuck E. Cheese. Mm. Here's your discount coupon. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Asinine Trivia. Trivia is so easy. It's Asinine. We play along at home as we play with Richard. Here we go, Richard. Question one. Name a game played with a tennis racket. Tennis. Tennis is right. All right. You almost stumped him on that. That's a good start. <laughs> he hesitated. He, he hesitated. Question number two. Where would I most likely buy a Sonic cheeseburger. Ooh, Sonic. Sonic is right. Good job. All right. Oh, finally, last question. Name the two guys who have won more broadcast awards than any other broadcasters in Oklahoma. Uh-oh. And who also enjoy sipping mango tequila and a raw egg yolk from a coconut shell while sitting in a hot tub filled with cheese queso. Oh, and who also perform the number one video podcast in America. Ooh. Jack and Ron. Hey. You got it, Jack and Ron. Jack and Ron. All right. All right. Now... If you have any questions you'd like to ask Richard, now you can go ahead and, uh, as far as the comments are concerned, you can let us know and we'll respond to it. And you know what? You can call us. Yeah. Doggone it, you can call us. Is anybody calling our number, Richard? No. What? 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 You got a phone, right? Dial us up. It's area code 405, then what? 509-5030. Yeah, 509-5030. It's just that simple. If there's a comment you want to make, a question you want to ask, uh, or just whatever. You know, it's yeah. wide open. You, you just want to you, tell us off. Yeah. I know a couple want to do that. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> the line so is hot now. 405-509-5030. That's the number. Yeah. Go ahead, pick it up. Yeah. Amy Giles Woodward is watching with yeah. us today. You want to make for a request? Out. Yeah. Maybe you want to make a request. Man, you know, something by... You could do that. Something by the weekend. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Uh, so go well, ahead and dial that number. You can ask. They're not saying they're going to get. Yeah. 405-509-5030 is our phone number. That's 405-509-5030. Go ahead and give us a, give us a hoot. Uh, a couple of things I noticed. Uh, you can now, at Disney World, ever been to Disney World? Now at Disney World, you can buy a pickle milkshake. Disney World, a pickle milkshake. So Don't make me puke. I was going to say. Jeez. <laughs> Disney World, where it's not only the cost of admission that makes you gag. Disney World, a pickle milkshake. Why? I don't know. I mean, who, who, who wanted it? Who, yeah, who, who's, who's who sitting by, it? you know, in some office, you know, drinking some tequila or whatever the case? Uh, pickle. Yeah, that's it. That's pickle it's an milkshake. idea. Let's do that. No, no, that's stupid. Don't don't do that. You're having enough problems as it is. Don't 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 complicate things any further, would you? Huh? huh? All right. Something I saw that's kind of a nice little touch. Taylor Swift, you know, she had this billion-dollar concert tour going on. Taylor yeah. Swift gave out huge bonuses to the people on her tour, including $100,000 bonuses to the 50 truck drivers who hauled her equipment. I bet that was in your Hollywood report coming up. Wait, 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 wait just a minute. Scratch that one out. Let me go ahead and I'll scratch. Save you, I'll save you the time of having to do that. So anyway, she gave a $100,000 bonus to each of the 50 truck drivers who hauled her equipment. How much equipment does she have? You know, we're not just talking a small little box truck. We're talking semi-tractor trailers. 50 drivers all picked up a $100,000 bonus. And uh, basically, the total amount she gave out in bonuses to the dancers, the roadies, everybody, the catering, $55 million in bonus. Well, what else are you going to do with the money? You, well, you, she's got so much money now. It's yeah. not, but here's the deal. That's going to put a lot of pressure next you know, uh, season. This is her Eras tour. Uh, yeah. Just uh, as far as, well, which tour do you want? I want uh, on Taylor's uh, tour. Not, yeah. Liz, not Lizzo, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Taylor. No. I want, I want to feel uh, do you have Taylor that story Lister. coming up in your uh, Yes, I do. About Lizzo? Yes, right. I do. Then well, I'll you, put that one to the well, side. Oh, you were, re- <laughs> you were really reaching, weren't you? No. Yeah, you hit all in your pocket. I was yeah. hitting it all, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
here's something I did find I thought pretty interesting because it depends on what state you live in as to how happy you are based on your income level. And there are 10 states where Americans say they can be happy with less than $70,000. No, It wouldn't be Oklahoma, that's for sure. I was about to say, you say how happy you you can be? Yeah. Okay. I want to hear this because I'm... Because some states you can be happy on less than $70,000. Yeah, well, I'll put it this way. I'm sitting sitting here and I'm pissed. Well, I'm I'm thinking the... uh, (laughs) One of the reasons About you, my money, doggone it. here, things can be pretty expensive. Just driving on the road, the turnpike, you know. I think I spend about 150 a month driving on turnpikes here in Oklahoma. Many states don't even have turnpikes. Anyhow. Um, yeah, we're not supposed to have a turnpike. Remember? Yeah, it was going to be once it's paid. Yeah, when, once, once it's a, paid for. Yeah, I think it was the Turner Turnpike. Once one turnpike is paid for, they're all paid for. They were supposed to de- eliminate uh, turnpike fees, period. That worked what hap- out. What happened to that? That worked well, out well, didn't it? Yeah, liars. All right, what I have for you then the 10 states. Let yeah. me give them to you. Yeah. Uh, number 10, Alabama. They say they can get by on 69.5 a year and be happy. I believe it. Wyoming, <laughs> then uh, Wyoming, North Dakota. These are pretty rural. And the Wyoming and North Dakota, yeah, pretty yeah, wide open. Yeah, you're out in the country, it seems yeah. like, you know, go killing your own food and stuff. Uh, next is, uh, did I say Rhode Island? No, you uh, didn't say that. They're next on the list at number seven. Uh, these are states where people say they can be happy, happy earning just 70000 a year. Uh, Kansas is next, then Indiana. Number four is Mississippi. Huh. Yeah, and number three is Vermont. Uh-huh. I thought it'd be expensive to live in Vermont. It is. Number two. <laughs> They're lying. Delaware. <laughs> they say they can get by on forty nine grand a year and be happy. In Delaware? Isn't that where President Biden has his uh, summer home? I believe you are correct, my friend. That, look, that, that is the place. But, you know, at the same time, remember, when the further you go back east, the, the further you have, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Corruption. Go ahead. Oh, corruption, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, finally, the number one state where people can be happy earning less than 70000 Yeah. New Hampshire, where they say the ideal income is $42,000. Lying, you are that's lying, a, lying. That's poverty. Lying. 42000 a year, that's poverty. Because, okay, forty two grand. Pay your taxes, federal and state. What, what do you got left? Thirty grand, maybe? You got a maybe. car? Yeah. You got a car? But you got to buy gas? Uh-huh. Well, you pay you got for a, car insurance? Uh, yeah, and what, do you have a tag? You need a tag. Yeah, well, hell and, yeah. Wait, wait a minute, you keep driving it? Yeah. Then eventually you're going to need some tires. Oh, oh. Do you hey. check out tires lately, how much they cost? Oh, my God. It's Gee. asinine how much they charge for tires. Oh, and by the way, you might want to eat. So, you know, think about that. How in the hell you get by on 42 grand a year? Well, well do this and, unless you grill outside. Keep your utilities on so you can cook. <laughs> <laughs> good point. But- Very good point. Let's say hi to some folks. Uh, I mentioned Amy Giles Woodward is checking us out. Santos, my friend Santos. From a former Jiffy Stop convenience store. Mm. Santos, I'll give you a call real soon. I want to find out what you're up to. Stephanie waller Wachinski <laughs> is out there. Christy Stewart, our good friend, my former uh, promotions director at WKY Radio back in the 80s. Christy lives in Toronto, and uh, I'm sure it's cooler up there today. Good old Toronto, Canada. Feels pretty good here in Oklahoma today. It's yeah, today's bad, not yeah. bad. Yeah, we had a little what a little rain this morning, early, yeah. early this morning. Oh, that was a it downpour. Was yeah, it was coming uh, down. Up here it was well, very aggressive. Well, I fine. Uh, in my place, it was just a little sprinkle. Really? Enough to cut through the heat. Holy. And uh that that was it. I didn't uh, know. About, uh, uh, about seven o'clock this morning, it was coming storm. down in buckets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, not here. I now I was watching the weather and I saw the edge. As it uh, did a little curve around Guthrie, kicked on Ed, uh, Edmund a little bit, but it it missed uh, it, it missed me except for you know wow. some, en- enough to bring the temperature down about five, ten, fifteen degrees. Like Fantastic! I oh, I, I thought so, man. All right, we got some audio for you, and this is pretty interesting. Mattel, you know the Mattel company. By the way, Mattel has just announced they've got this new. There's a new theme park going up in uh, Glendale, Arizona. It's going to be massive. And two of the roller coasters are going to be Mattel Hot Wheels cars. So yeah, I, that's I, going to be I remember cool. that. Oh, it's, it's too bad. And I know we're getting a big theme park here some, somewhere in Oklahoma. I was hoping that they would come here instead. They might. You never know. There's plenty of time because they haven't built a thing. All right. But anyway, let's go back to Mattel. They're looking for a chief Uno player. A what? 
a chief Uno player to help promote their new variation of Uno called Uno Quattro. I'm sure you guys have played Uno, the game, in the past. I haven't played it in years, but I've played Uno. Um, anyway, here's what you have to do if you want to become the chief Uno player for Mattel. And uh, also, they tell you how much you're going to get paid. Here is a commercial promoting that job. Check this out. We're looking for our very first Chief Uno player. As our Chief Uno player, your job is to play and teach people our latest game, Uno Quattro. And the best part of all, we'll pay you $4,444.44 a week for four weeks. All you have to do is play Uno Quattro four hours a day, four days a week for those four weeks. As the Chief Uno player, you're the kind of person that takes Uno everywhere, and you're not afraid to get a little competitive. Not bad. Yeah. You work uh, four days a week. For four, four hours, hours a day for four weeks, and you get four thousand four hundred forty-four dollars each week. All right, it's a nice so bunch I'm of money. I'm telling you, man, oh. it's Uno today. It's poker tomorrow. You watch what I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you watch what I tell you. No doubt about then that. Then a little blackjack, and then off you go. We'll we'll see what happens. All right. Once again, let us give you that uh, phone number. You can dial us direct because we're worldwide. We're global, mm -hmm. coast to coast, number one video podcast in America. Yeah, don't yell at your phone. Uh -uh. You, can, you can yell at us through your phone. Come on. Go ahead and dial mm -hmm. it up right now. Area code 405-509-5030. That's 405-509-5030. Shout at us. It takes about 10 rings because it's... Is this a Google line or some such thing? Yes, sir. Okay. So it's some sort of, you know, because we don't have a budget for this show. We have to use some sort of <laughs> internet means. We can't actually you know, get an AT&T yeah. phone line. Stuff uh, ends when it comes to its natural conclusion, not because yeah. we answered it or anything else. But don't <laughs> let that discourage you. Go ahead. Give us a call. 405-509-5030. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Come back. We've got a ton of stuff to cover. News of the I'll Be Damned. Sleazy, trashy showbiz report. We've got Tribon, dumbass joke of the day. Oh, and of course, we still want to wrap up with Two Tough Trivia. And we've got email oh, and Roy the Movie Guy. This email, oh, let me tell you. But go ahead. All right. Might make your hair curl. Here we go. <laughs> we'll take a quick commercial break and be right back. Hang with us. Hey, Jack, BK, I need some wings. Are you guys up there? Affirmative. Your backup is cloud-based. It's all on the cloud nowadays. That's funny. But do you guys have the wings? Winger, Jack. Winger. Winger. Hey, they had a couple of big hits back in the 80s, remember? Winger, big hair. Great wings don't just fall from the sky. They come from Louie's, where we're preparing food fresh daily. Come try one of our great new sandwiches or wings with any of seven delicious sauces. Louie's, we're in your neighborhood. We've got this down to a science. Over. Yeah, we're just not up here winging it. Hey, Al, I thought we were meeting at Othello's. Hey, Jack, I am at Othello's. Well, I'm looking around, and I don't see you. Well, wait, are you at Othello's in Edmond? No, I'm at Othello's in Campus Corner in Norman. Oh, great. Well, fortunately, both Othello's have great Italian food. They sure do, and I'm having the baked ziti. Ooh, I'm having chicken marsala. Let's continue with the meeting. Yeah, sure thing, over the phone, but I need one thing. What's that? Uh, your credit card number, because you're buying. Othello's Italian Restaurant on Campus Corner in Norman and in downtown Edmond. You bought it online, and now you need to haul that big couch. Flash hauler it. Auto washer or dryer and need to transport it from the seller's location to yours? Flash hauler it. Have office furniture to move across town? Flash hauler it. Car breakdown and you need a tow? Flash hauler it. Anytime you need furniture or appliances moved or need a tow, flash hauler it. Haul it, tow it, deliver it with Flash Hauler. Download the Flash Hauler app free. Do it now. Flash hauler. Flash Hauler, great company, great organization, the game changer in the moving business. As we say, Uber transports people, Flash Hauler transports merchandise, they move anything. Uh, the people working for Flash Hauler are now called service providers, and they do a variety of services. They, they provide all kinds of uh, services for moving stuff from point A to point B. And now, too, as Ron stated, they have hooked up with Mom and Dad's house. Tell them about mom and dad's house. Mom and dad's house. You know mom and dad, they got rid of all the kids, and maybe they want to go ahead and chill out a little bit without all those bills. They want to downsize, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mom and dad's house, they can help you. You know, courtesy of Flash Hauler as well, these two organizations have merged. Uh, do you need to sell your house first? They take that into consideration. Headaches of moving? Too much stuff? Huh? Huh? You know what I'm talking about. Well, how about worried about making repairs before you move? before you sell your house. 
Look, you don't have to worry about that with mom and dad's house and flash hauler. They've got you covered. Now, there's something called nice and free as well, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, nice and free. Yeah. The way this works is um, you have something that uh, you want to get rid of. Yeah. In, uh, in your you, downsizing. Yeah. And you, you don't need to see it. Turn it over to flash hauler. Flash hauler now has acquired a bunch of merchandise that... If you need something, maybe a couch, a sofa, a love seat, or whatever, you go to the Flash Hauler website and look up the merchandise they have, the products. And it's free, nice and free. All you do is pay for the transport of the merchandise from the Flash Hauler warehouse to you. Man. How easy is that? Plus, you can get an online estimate for your job in a flash on the Flash Hauler website, Man. flashhauler.com. That's great. F L A S H O L R.com. That is a great flash deal. Flashhauler.com. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to mention one other thing, real quick. Our friend Steve, Steve with uh, Biotech, you know, the uh, company that produces Shine Time. Uh, Steve was telling me that uh, this is the time of the year when you start getting this rain off and on. Uh, that you really need the product Shine Time. So check out Biotech. Nothing worse than a car that looks all washed out like, uh, what happened, man? That's a nice car. Why didn't you take care of it? Well, you can. I Shine Time two vehicles over the weekend, as a matter of fact. It's quick, it's easy, and you can use Shine Time, the product itself, on every aspect, every element of your vehicle. It can be used on glass, leather, vinyl, obviously the paint. It'll give it a mm -hmm. heck of a shine and a polish. Use it on your wheels. Use it everywhere on your vehicle, and it's uh, an incredible product. Shine Time yeah. from Biotech you in know, Oklahoma City. If you see either of us out, why don't you ask us if we can go ahead and turn you on to Shine Time? Sure. Yeah, you'll get an answer. No doubt about that. By the way, we've got to say hi to Justin. Justin Fox is checking us out. Ferry uh, Arawan is watching. Sharita Barrett, thanks to all you guys for checking us out, along with, well, you mentioned Patty, Patty Stowers, and Kathy Hill Weatherspoon, Richard Haggerty, Lenny Davis. Hey, Lenny, what up? Why is it this does and, not show up on my phone? Well, here's a name. I, I don't I'm going to have a hard time with this one, but it's a cool name. It's Hanky. McGee, Hanky McGee. Hanky McGee? Hanky McGee. Excuse me. Let me look. Let me. That, I mean, can you say H E N G K I? Then the next word is M G L or I. And then H E N K I. Anyway. -G. Yeah. Well, here's an easier name <laughs> Gail Martin. B. Gail Martin. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Hanky. Hanky. Okay. Hanky. Okay. Got another piece of. Uh, oh, no, no, no. We can't get to this audio before we get. We got to get to this email Ron was talking about. This is uh, an important part of the program where we try to help people out. We've always done this. It's something, mm -hmm. a service Jack and Ron have pri provided to this community it's, for many years. It, it's tough. A lot of people, they step away from situations like this, but not us. Uh -uh. We, 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 we don't tackle run. it head on. Yeah, damn right. Here we go. Dear Jack and Ron, <laughs> I, I hear you help others, but my problem is just a little different. Talking about my husband. Uh -oh. uh -huh. Uh -oh. He and his friends were discussing how they want to be buried. Well, Ooh. don't know where they picked all this stuff up, but they had a real nice discussion about it. I was a little concerned with how Ooh, my husband seemed to be attached to perhaps being buried, standing up in a coffin. What? You know, turn the coffin up. Really? And you, and you, That's and, what he wants to do? Yeah, stand, standing up in the coffin. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe being buried naked. Yeah. And I'm like, where, where, where is this coming from? Uh, I know you and I had one point, we were talking about setting up a recording so that each time somebody goes by, we can say, hi. Oh, yeah. How you doing? Like at our funeral. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And maybe if we get a little wire, we can say, hi, how you doing? You could set that up on an yeah. audio loop of some kind. That's I've what also, I'm thinking. Don't you know, talk to my wife. <laughs> and also, one of the things we thought of with uh -huh. regards to our burial, like at the funeral or the services, those things are expensive, you know, to be buried. We thought on the coffin, mm -hmm. much like a NASCAR, we could have sponsorships on the side. You there know, like, we go. Yeah, like Louis Grill and Bar, Othello's, 
uh, STP. Who, uh, you know, what, who else would you want on the? Oh, you can just put your, your you can put your own personal message. It doesn't, you know, necessarily have to be a product. It could be your own personal. Yeah, message. but they like, can help support the, the the cost of your funeral service. Well, well yeah, you know? I was I was thinking here I go, and you know, and I, I think it would be great. They need to be a little bit more inventive. Yeah, and I think uh, you, you wouldn't find people so I don't know hesitant to pass on. I think. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to have like Budweiser on the side of your coffin. There you go. Yeah. There you now there would be a cool sponsor, yeah. well, right? Maybe maybe with a big chest of ice and yeah. oh, right there, and a bunch of cold ones for anybody yeah. to On, enjoy. Yes, yeah, right. Only the, only the early arrivals though. Now, if you're sitting in the back, you might miss out. There you go. <laughs> well, how did this all end? And did she finally resolve this issue with her? No, husband? no, no, no. Uh, she says that they should know better. Look, I have the idea. I have an idea right now. You tell him. If he keeps this up, you're going to bury him in a dress. Whoa. <laughs> now that would be yeah. cool. W with makeup. Ooh. Let him chew on that for a little yeah. while. Yeah. Let him live yeah. with that kink yeah. for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to say hi to uh, Khaliad Hussein. Khaliad Hussein. Hey, thanks for checking us out today, Khaliad. Appreciate you. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, is Roy the movie guy ready to go? Yep. Okay, let's see what's on Roy's mind this morning. Good morning, or good afternoon, I should say. Good afternoon, Roy. Thank you, guys. A great weekend. I hope your producer had a great vacation. And before we talk about what's opening up this weekend at the box office, I'd like to make a special mention. It looks like the next movie to hit $1 billion is Mattel's Barbie. Now, Jack and Ron, do you think Barbie still has enough legs, no pun intended, to catch the Super Mario Brothers movie, which is currently the number one movie uh, worldwide with $1.4 billion? Do you think Barbie has enough to catch Mario to make another $400 million before the end of its run to be the new number one movie of the year? Now, let's talk about what's opening up this weekend at the box office, and that is The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Starring Javier Botet, Corey Hawkins, Liam Cunningham, David Dalsmalchin, and Chris Wiley. Dracula's unholy presence dooms the crew of the merchant ship Demeter as it sails from Carpathia to London. Rated R with a runtime of one hour and 59 minutes long. And that's a look at what's opening up this weekend at the box office. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, All right, thanks. Thank you, Roy. Yeah, back here at Othello's Italian yeah. Restaurant uh, in Edmond, Oklahoma. Great Italian food. Need to check it out. Remember, Sundays, I don't know if anybody knows, they do a half-price pizza on Sunday. Yeah, Oop, okay. Uh, right. yeah, half-price pizza on Sunday here <laughs> yeah. at uh, Othello's Italian Restaurant. Um, uh, well, I, I, will, I will say this. Uh, have you seen Barbie the movie? No, I have I not. not, I have not seen, I've seen Barbie the doll, which was my my cousin had one. But that's beside the point. Uh, they were talking about uh, Margot Robbie. Oh yeah, how she's the, she has to. Uh, I guess it's on the front part of her of her feet wearing those Barbie shoes, and they say it took some people weeks to learn to do that. She learned hers in oh i think a day maybe less than a day wow. how to stand up like that and oh she's standing proud now those are pretty uh, spiked yeah. heels i bet she's making some big bang. oh yeah now i have something you talk about how much money this movie can make when we get to your hollywood update i have a movie that could possibly overtake barbie all right yeah we'll find out which one that is all right don't forget we got dumbass joke of the day coming up with that sleazy trashy showbiz report uh, and news of the I'll be damned. But first, another cool clip of audio. Uh, uh, Mr. Softy Truck. You remember those? Mr. Softy Trucks for ice cream uh, oh, you know, yeah. and so forth. <clears throat> These trucks would drive through the neighborhoods. Anyway, a Mr. Softy Truck disappeared from a neighborhood in New Jersey because someone complained about the music that was playing out of the truck. Hmm. And here's a man from the area and vice president of Mr. Softy, Mike Conway, talking about the complaint. Listen to this. Now, of course, uh, there it is. 
somebody was complaining about the music, and so Mr. Softy's not going to come down our street no more. If it's too late, if it's past, like, you know, 10 o'clock at night, then we're like, okay, that's way too late. It's waking people up. But sometimes it could be uh, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon where, oh, you're waking up my sleeping baby. Well, it's like, hey, well, <laughs> there's 40 other kids in the neighborhood that are running around and, and want ice cream. Yeah, you know what's yeah. really interesting about that is growing up in Chicago, we didn't have Mr. Softy. We had good humor. And the good humor truck come by, and all they can do is open up the freezer on the back and take out a, a bomb pop or an ice cream bar or whatever. Whereas Mr. Softy, the first time I saw one, I was traveling as a kid. Uh, we were in Florida, and uh, the folks that were a distant relative of ours, we were at their house. And all of a sudden, I heard that music playing, and I look out, and all the kids are running down the huge truck. They had a huge truck. It was like a yeah. food truck that you see today. They uh-huh. could make milkshakes and floats and all kinds Stay of stuff. Stay out of my head. That's exactly what I was talking about. This looked like an R- big old giant RV. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I'm going to tell you. When this bad boy comes down the street, the street is lit up. Oh, hell at night. yeah. It's big. And it uh, looks like you great. Saying, uh, it's you, could, cool. you could get that milkshake, that mall, or what, whatever else just about that you want in the form of, of dairy uh, as far as ice cream and things of that. I wonder what happened. Why did they stop doing that? I, I can see. We don't. Uh, did you, did we have them in Oklahoma? Because I yeah yeah really yeah. I mean why they do were, I don't have those. Yeah. Let me we, let me tell you, man. Those things are awesome. Those bad boys would stop right in front of my folks' house, uh-huh. and then the people who maybe missed it in the block before uh-huh. they're running down. The people here they're running out, and the and the guys they know which blocks have the most children. Sure, and uh, it, it's it's great, and and some of them they they're just standing out on the on the curb waiting for. Uh, for them to come down, that, but uh, it, it and they could produce some, all kinds of great stuff. Oh, it wasn't yeah, just an great. ice cream bar or a popsicle. They actually could make some it great. Give you something to save your money for. There you go. The only thing though, you never knew when they were coming. <laughs> <laughs> you never knew until you heard that music that's and saw the lights. That's right. That's all right. right. We got to get to something we call news of the. I'll be damned. I'll be interesting story. Forty-five mm-hmm. year old. Mr. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this a male or female? Oh, well, it's a, it's a female, apparently. Uh, 45-year-old Sikela C- Coles, her name is Sikela, was the director of parking enforcement for a town in Pennsylvania. Sikela. Until she was caught stealing from the parking meters. Well. She would have employees turn in all the coins that they got from the meters, and another worker would convert them into cash, hmm. which... She would keep in her desk. I thought that was supposed to go to the city or something. Well, what? Now, now we're finding out yeah. about. Did she still? She's still not a, a, a parking attendant. And me made nothing. nothing we're gonna nothing. find out. Yeah, I, I don't see her having that job. But go ahead. Let me get to the rest of the story. Well, at least one portion of that money would be used as her own petty cash. Not legal, of course. Uh, she'd use that money to cover the costs of food, birthday cakes, office parties, restaurant trips for her and her staff. She'd also, uh, she was also accused of voiding parking tickets for her family members. Oh, sure. Aunt Julie, yeah, don't worry about it. Hey, if you got the hookup, you got the hookup, man. Yeah. Hey, come on. You spent three hours in a 30-minute zone? Nah, it's no problem. Let me wash that for you. Uh, the investigation <laughs> reportedly took months, and she's been charged with theft and receiving stolen property, among other things. Officials say that she stole more than $4,300, but about $2,000 of it has been returned. But about $4,300 of that money. And we're talking quarters and nickels and dimes. (laughs) Out of a parking meter. (laughs) But she'd have the parking, uh, she was the head of the parking meter division, and she'd have all of the little uh, meter maids collect the money and bring it to her. Now, who dropped a dime on her? How did that happen? Well, that's a good, they said it took months and months of investigation. Obviously, somebody knew something. I'm guessing maybe Mm -hmm. the accounting department said, you know, over the years, we were generating this much revenue and all of a sudden it's been cut down to nothing or cut in half. Well, maybe they that need, Maybe they need to look for the person right under her who would get her job if she were fired. Hey, there's a thought. <laughs> well, son of yeah. a gun. All right. It's almost like radio, isn't it? All yes, right. <laughs> boy, howdy. All right. Here we go. We got another piece of audio for you. I, I think, and I hope you're really going to enjoy this. Uh, quite often our radio show when we were doing the terrestrial thing, the number one radio show in America, I might point out, Jack and Ron over the years, uh, we would get celebrity visitors. 
including former President Bill Clinton. Yep. Uh, he would just show up. And Ron and I were talking at one point about the old TV show, Desperate Housewives, uh, where one of the customer, one of the characters, I should say, Bree, who was on the show, admitted to having a drinking problem, and her husband, they admitted to having a sex addiction. So here's <laughs> former President Bill Clinton getting in on that conversation with Jack and Ron. Listen to this. And that's Bree. Hey, fellas, it's me, Bill Clinton. You were talking earlier. I heard you talking about Bree from uh, Desperate Housewives having a drinking problem, maybe an alcohol addiction. And earlier you were talking about sexual addiction. Yeah, that's her, uh, her partner as far as uh, kicking her alcohol uh, addiction. He has another addiction. He's a sex addict as well, well which kind hey, of turned Bree on. Join the club, brother. You know, I could be considered that, too. At least that's what some people like to think. Uh, now, what is a sex addict? I mean, you know, we, uh, you we know, know about that, but how, how is it officially I uh, defined? I don't believe, as former president of the United States, I don't believe there really is such a thing. I don't think when it comes to sex, you can get too much of a good thing ever. I just don't believe well, that. Well, that's of a good thing. Well, you know, let me tell you something. Let me tell you, even going back to my high school and college years, yep. even the worst I ever had was pretty damn good. <laughs> Daddy liked. <laughs> well, it's good of you to come by, Mr. President, and fess up. Fess up. I'm proud of it. It's something to be proud of. Just the way I am. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Well, you know, uh, hopefully one of uh, the, the many medical professionals that listen to this program each oh, and boy. every day will call in and give us the definition of sex addict. Because I don't think it's somebody that's sitting in the in the corner jonesing at the clubs. Or then again, it may be. I don't know. You know what? Picking up hookers. Before that person calls in, I want to get the hell out of here. Because I know they're <laughs> going to give you all this clinical hooey pooey. And I really, I don't want to hear it, man. <laughs> well, I and really you, and don't. You don't. And you don't have a definition. I ain't got no definition. <laughs> I just know I got an addiction. I'll see you fellas <laughs> later. All right. What was really fun about that is uh, when he before you come up, all the Secret Service that would flood the, oh, yeah. the halls, flood the the front of the uh, uh, of the station. It, it was it was great. Yeah, the lobby, but, the the receptionist up there in the yeah. lobby was just petrified by all these Secret Service guys showing yeah. up, dark glasses, dark suits, you know. But she knew who was coming when they showed up. Oh yeah, it was. It was yeah. guys. We, He's here. <laughs> <laughs> we got to say hi to Marty Cyphers. Marty is watching today. Hey, Marty, thanks so much for checking it out. Joy Kelly is also checking out the podcast. Hey, guys. Hey, do us a favor. <laughs> Share this podcast with everybody you know. Anybody you've got as a friend on Facebook, yeah. go ahead and share it with them. Oh, by the way, we're also on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, and you might want to point that out to other people around the country because I've got friends, not many, but I do have some friends who are not into uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, but they will watch YouTube. So. But that's not all, my friend. Huh? Maybe you want a choice other than those. Well, you can go ahead and call us. Call us live right here at 405-509-5030. 405-509-5030. You can call us and we'll talk to you live on the air right here, right now. Yeah, no matter what you want to talk about. It doesn't matter. We're always available and we're always willing to share with you any information you're trying to pry on. We have us. an opinion. I promise we you do. that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's time to get to that sleazy, trashy showbiz report. Lizzo. Oh, what a whizzle. Lizzo is saying she is not the villain the media is portraying her to be. Uh, we're, we're talking about allegations made by her former dancers who uh -huh. say that uh, they were treated really bad. If she showed up at a club, they'd have to show up as well, you know, in case anything happens. You know, she's got backup dancers with her the whole time, and she was kind of mean. This is what the Lizzo's dancers and some other members of her entourage were saying. She's saying it's all a lie. And then it's they also, some of them said they were, she was body shaming them, and I don't yeah, understand yeah. how that works. Well, so. well look at her. Well, yeah. I mean, well, how are you going to body shame that's somebody? That's what I'm saying is how yeah. how does Lizzo, who's, you know, obviously a... Uh, healthy a, woman. Yeah, very healthy woman. How do you body shame somebody if yeah. you're that uh, healthy? Well, they say, I, some of them said she, she demeaned them and fat shamed them and also took them to uh, live shows in Amsterdam and forced them to interact in a sexually explicit manner mm -hmm. with performers. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Oh my! You know, you look at that, and then you start you start thinking, 
Lizzo, really? How long has Lizzo been the size that she is right now? Maybe there's a lot of stuff that she's kept just hunkered down, and now that she's a star, she can kind of let it out a little sure. bit. Sure. You know, so I don't know. It's I'm a, sure Lizzo but, growing up probably had a tough time. I uh, mean, I'm just guessing because her size is a little larger than, yeah. uh, you know, than you can get it at the 579 shop. Yeah, being by herself is the reason she plays that flute so well. Uh <laughs> 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 Carrie Underwood opening for Guns N' Roses is Are happening. You kidding? It's happening. It's happening. Get and out. she's already she's already done it. I was hoping to get maybe we can do this next week. I was hoping to get a, a little bit of uh, uh, one of the cuts that she was doing from from this particular. I'll bet we can concert. find it. Yeah. yeah. But Carrie Underwood, Guns N' Roses, man, it's fine. Uh, high or drunk? You probably well. You, you could get a job in Hollywood if you were either one, <laughs> high or drunk. Really? Yeah. Uh, these actors were really waxed, but still worked. Margot Robbie, we just talked about her, did we not? She was She, she was, was drunk on the set of The Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, you know, some of the scenes in The Wolf of Wall Street, I could see where she would have needed a little liquid courage to that's, perform some of those. That's what they said. They brought yeah. her a bottle of vodka and uh, she knocked some back, and then she went out there. And well, you, know, you remember you know, some you know, of those scenes. They're definitely. I remember some they're of about those as scenes. If they're R rated. They're about as close to X as you can get. Yeah, I remember that, Man. especially when she was on the. Anyway, yeah, I remember. Uh, okay, uh, Drake in his audition for uh, oh, for a gig. Let's he see. was and, drunk too, or just yeah, high? yeah, he, he, he was. He was drunk and high. Drunk wow. and high. Can you be both? Sure you can. Anna Kendrick, uh, for, you know, drinking buddies. Uh, let's see. We have Martin Sheen for Apocalypse Now. I can see I can what see I can too, see yeah. that being the case. And uh, Carrie Fisher for Star Wars. And I thought about this one. There was a long list, but I didn't write them all down. But this one, I thought of Jack because it reminded me of you. One mm -hmm. of your favorite actors in one of your favorite actors, favorite roles? Let me see. Um, would it be Samuel L. Jackson? No. No? Um, no, we're talking about drunk or high now. Leonardo Samuel. DiCaprio? No. Sam no? Yeah. John Travolta? Uh -uh. Tom Cruise? Mm -hmm. No. Well, one of my favorite actors. Yeah, I didn't think Tom Cruise was one of your favorite actors. Well, go ahead. no. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of... Just, just throwing it out there. Right. Clint Eastwood? No. Uh, I'm going to say the name, and you're going to give me... And I'll the remember motion. exactly. Billy Bob Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton yep. in... Not Bad News Bears. No. Um, you got half of it. Oh, Bad Santa. That How can I not remember that? Bad Santa, Billy yeah, Bob Thornton. He was great in he, that. He was drunk. That's one of the. <laughs> that is one of the best movies ever made. Yes, you indeed. know. I know they don't give you know whatever Academy Awards for the movies such they, as that, but they, they give, should. They give Razzies. Out yeah, for, for, and that yeah. movie certainly deserved an uh, award. Well, it spawned another movie, a Batter Santa. Batter Santa. Yeah, so that was good. Have you seen them both? Yes. Oh, no, I have too. A numerous mm, times. Well, those are fun. Be you careful what doors you're open. You never know what you're going to find. Richard, do you watch those too? Yeah. 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 Great movies. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Barbie hit uh, $1 billion in profits. Uh, now, there's another movie that is based on a game that they are saying they have all the hopes in the world for because uh, as old as Barbie is and uh, all the young people that she may be picking up, this particular movie, and the title of it, goes back even further than Barbie. It's not Shoots and Ladders, is it? No, it is not. It's not um, Parcheesi? No, let, let me go ahead, Nate, because yeah. we're going to go through this forever. <laughs> <laughs> Monopoly. Oh, God, Monopoly. I read yeah. something about that. Yeah, yeah. Monopoly. Uh, they're going to do a movie, and they're saying that as good as Barbie uh, may be, or as popular or whatever, that they feel Monopoly will definitely go right past her. Buster Rhymes says his difficulties with sex pushed him to lose weight. Okay. And uh, Beyonce's mom filed for divorce. 
after oh. eight years. Wow. You know, she got a new dad, and then that dad's gone just that quick. Britney Spears wants more children. Her husband says, I'm not sure about that. And, of course, uh, Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubens passed. Yeah. Sinead O'Connor, dead at 56. And Sofia Vergara getting divorced from that hunk of a husband that she has. Well, she's yeah. not bad herself. Yeah, I don't Sophia think. Sofia Vergara, I didn't realize she's 50. Yeah. She looks like she's 30. Well, you know. When she you have that hot. much money yeah. and you are that hot a property, of course, they're going to make sure that you look good all the time. I think Margot Robbie will be one of those that looks great when she's 60. I mean, because they, she's got all the money and the technology to make people look better yeah. gets better each and every year. And this is the, this is a movie that she wanted to do. So she's involved in this yeah. as far as on the on the end is getting some of that real, real good payback money. But uh, we will see that Margot Robbie... Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Also, <sighs> folks, uh, if make sure the kids are in bed. Look for Babylon. Babylon's uh, another uh, one. And uh, also, yeah. once upon a time in Hollywood, she plays the part of Sharon Tate. And she, I, I mean, I thought she was really good in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those are some of the movies from uh, uh, Margot Robbie's fan club. Boy, yes, howdy. Jack and Ron. That's your Hollywood update, baby. There you go. All right. We want to say hi to Rita Young, who's also jumped on board. Hey, Rita, thanks for checking us out today. Thanks for checking out the number one video podcast in America. We're global. We're worldwide. We're blowing up from one planet to another. The whole world knows about this, the number one video podcast in America. All right. A little bit later on, hopefully before we go off the air, uh, we're going to look at a study. What is, what day of the laziest days as far as production wise producing mm. work what day is the laziest day we'll talk Monday a, what now Monday he says Monday I think Friday but that's uh, you get toward the end of the week and everybody starts slacking off thinking oh I'll call it a day at noon mm. well since we've gotten answers from both of you it's Friday hey I did hit it right yeah Friday and they say it's Friday afternoon <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Friday after 12 noon, everybody says yeah, the hell with it. Friday afternoon, yeah. they say, you know what? I'm going to lunch and I'm not coming back. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to say hi to Angelo. Angelo Buffon? Buffoni? Angelo Buffoni. Yeah. Nice to see you. Uh, I was appreciate you. Buffoon at first, but it's not. No, it's B U F F O N E. Buffoni, I believe. I mean, maybe it's a silent E. Angelo. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for. <laughs> I, anyway, thanks for checking out the podcast. Be kidding. sure to share kidding. this podcast with everybody you know as we are about to step into the dumbass joke of the day. All right, dumbass joke of the day. We have three very cheesy jokes. Uh, we let Ron pick one of the cheesy jokes. So again today, unlike any other week, or I should say just like any other <laughs> week, Ron gets to pick his cheese. Here are your three jokes to pick from. A boy named Bonnie... That's number one. Number two, the shoes. Number three, the new employee. That's a boy named Bonnie, the shoes, the new employee. Which one will it be, Ron? Well, right off the bat, the one that grabbed my attention is a boy named Bonnie. All right. Yeah, this, Let me it, see if it, I can get it, to is that. Is this going to get real good? Is this going to get, like, controversial? Oh, we're going to find out here. Get sued or something? I got to find my material, make sure I got it here. All right. <laughs> The story of a boy named Bonnie. There was once a boy named Bonnie who was constantly harassed for his goofy name. He thought he was doomed to never find love because of his name. But one day, he met a beautiful girl who didn't care, and they fell in love. They got married. They had a child, a beautiful baby girl. But Bonnie was worried. What if he gave her a terrible name like his parents gave him? Hmm. So he let his wife pick the name, and she named the girl Love. Unfortunately, Love was constantly ridiculed for her name, just like Bonnie had been oh, all those years. Too bad. Till she couldn't take it anymore. One day at the age of 16, after years of humiliation, Love came home with a loaded revolver. Bonnie was the only one home because his wife had gone out for groceries. Love, the daughter, kicked open the front door, raised the revolver, and yelled, Who named me? Who named me? Bonnie loved his wife very much and would not allow her to be you know implicated so uh, anyway anything to protect his wife he took the blame he said it was me i named you bam 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 
Love blasted three bullets into Bonnie's chest and then ran off. Wow. As Bonnie lay there, blood seeping into the carpet, his wife came home, shocked. She dropped the groceries and yelled, Bonnie, Bonnie, and he died. What happened, Bonnie? Oh, my God. And with his last remaining breath, he whispered into her ear, shot through the heart, and you're to blame. Darling, you gave love a bad name. Come on, somebody ring the damn bell. I want to get a rope. <laughs> <laughs> you got to admit, it's kind of creative. Richard, come on, man. Oh, great. Uh, a little bit aggressive. Okay. A little bit. Ron, I don't know if it deserved three days. Uh, I know. I, I was, my hand was coming down for that friendly. third one, but I couldn't stop it. <laughs> All right, you want another one? I, I, I knew it was going to be like that because he kind of backed out like yeah. he wanted to run from the room. But go All ahead. Right. Here's another. A guy was sitting on a bench looking out at the water when a guy came up, came up to him and offered him a bet. He said, I bet you $5 I can tell you where you got your shoes. Hmm. The man was from several states away. He figured, well, there's no way this guy could guess which shoe, sto shoe store um, he bought them from. So he said, okay, I'll agree to the bet. The guy put out his hand. They shook hands on the bet. The guy grinned and said, now I'm going to tell you where you got your shoes. You got your shoes on your feet. Hmm. Come on, man. Hmm. He's, he's, Ooh, what vacation. did you do this weekend? Yeah. Okay. What did, what did you do? Yeah. I got one last one for you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the boss is trying to hire a new employee. The boss needs to hire a new employee, but he's got a pile of 300 resumes on his desk. He needs to pick somebody quickly. The boss tells one of his assistants to make calls on 50 of those resumes. Call 50 of them and toss the rest in the trash. And the guy's like, throw 250 resumes away? What if the best candidates are in there? And the boss says, you got a point, but then again, I don't need people with bad luck around here. <laughs> okay, come on. That, that was the best one. That was the best yeah, one. Yeah, that's, so there you go. And so... Now, where, where, where did you go this weekend? <laughs> I, I didn't go anywhere, really, this weekend. Yeah, okay. Hung out here. Yeah, because I, I get the idea that you really imbibed just a little bit. No, <laughs> not really. And then you went home and said... Yeah, it's good enough for them. <laughs> it's good enough for government work. Ian Cooper is watching today. Thank you, Ian, as well as Jamie Williams. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, be sure to share this podcast with everybody you know. I believe it is time for Tribond. Oh, this is the fun part of the show where we give you three <laughs> words and you got to come up with one word to work with the three. Your answer must match mine. All right, now this is the one from two weeks ago because last week we were off. We gave you, you know... 14 days to come up with the answer. I think both of you guys had the answer on this one. The three words, leg, red, house. Leg, red, house. Which one of you came up with it? Uh, I don't know, I think, but I, think I, came, my, I think came my wife up. said it. Dog, right? What was that? Dog. Uh, I think my dog wife. was correct. Yeah. Okay. Dog, okay. Dog, dog leg, red dog. Yeah. Dog house. All right. Now, we've got a new one for this week, and you'll have seven days to contemplate, to think about it. Here we go. Three words. You've got to come up with one word that works with the three. Your answer must match mine. Three words today. Control, theater, watch. Let me give it to you one more time. Three words. You've got to come up with one word that works with the three. Control, theater, watch. All right? Watch. Think about yeah. those. Yep. Uh, are we talking about like a... Uh, somebody being on watch or the the actual instrument. These watch. are kinda, things you need to contemplate. Like me, <laughs> These are things you need to contemplate. Again, what did I say the three words were? Control, Control theater, and watch. Theater and watch. All right, keep that in mind. We'll uh, we'll get your answer for you one week from today, right here from Othello's Italian Restaurant in Edmond, Oklahoma. And now Ron's going to wrap things up with two tough trivia. All right, here we go, gang. The question. What are the uh, three songs played most in America? I said Happy Birthday, White Christmas, and Yesterday. National Anthem. National Anthem. I forgot about that one. Okay. So is that, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Is that your only guess? Yeah. Okay. I said three. But okay. <laughs> well, one out of the three. Is that one of your guesses yeah. out of the three? Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. 
Star Spangled Banner. I was close. Happy birthday. And take me out to the ball game. Oh. No one plays take So wait a minute. They played at every ball game. Every ball game. Remember how many teams, professional teams there are, but they don't just play them at the professional level. They play them at the minor league level sure. as well. And so it gets, it's, there's one time during the summer, man, that's all you get. Hmm. So we have, again, Happy Birthday, which is one I came up with. Yep. Star Spangled Banner, which Richard came up with. Yep. And then Take we're, Me Out to the Ball Game. We're giving it to Richard. Ah, thanks. <laughs> I was close. And, and, take, and Take Me Out to the Ball Game. There you have it, my friend. Uh, next oh. time around, we'll have uh, another great Too Tough Trivia question for you. And thanks to all you guys for checking us out on the uh, podcast today. We're available on YouTube. Uh, on video, as well as our Facebook page, Jack and Ron. And thanks to Kathy Kesserman for uh, jumping on board uh, to check it out as well. Be sure to share this podcast with everybody you know. The video podcast is the number one video podcast in the world, global, nationwide, worldwide. Jack Elliott, Ron Williams. And I might also point out that we, on Wednesday, drop all the audio from this podcast, uh, the video part of it. We drop the audio onto all podcast sites iHeartMedia Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Spreaker, Deezer, you name one, we yeah. are there. And that's not all, my friend. Now, say you're busy for whatever reason, I don't know what, but at the same time, you can leave us a message. Area code 405-509-5030. If you can't reach us or, or you really want to let us have it or pat us on the back, whatever the case, you can do it. 405-509-5030. That's the number for Jack and Ron. Appreciate that. Thanks to uh, Alan Nagy, who jumped on board, too. Trying to catch uh, everybody's names as they jump on board with the video podcast. I uh, hope you'll check it out again next week at 1 o'clock. Live from Othello's Italian Restaurant. Thanks to the great people here at Othello's in Edmond. And remember, they've got a location on Campus Corner in Norman if you're on the south end of town. Plus, thanks to Flash Holler, major sponsor of the show. Flash Holler, they transport merchandise like Uber transports people. Go to Flash Holler. Dot com, F L A S H O L R dot com. Oh, don't forget now, they've also merged with mom and dad's house. Very important. Mom and dad's house. Flash, That's the way flash to do and it. Holler. Yeah, flash holler and full, mom and dad's house. Come on. That helps move the people who are like ready to move on in their life, senior citizens or whatever. Yeah. Move into a smaller dwelling, get, get rid of all the junk they got. Get in that rid of all house. the kids, yeah. man. Can you just can you just imagine you've had two or three kids living with producer of the show uh and i uh, hope he had a good time in maui even though he didn't take us with him so anyway we got to get out of here remember when you go out to do what you do do it like jack and ron come on i beg you do what you do like jack and ron do what they do be the best at what you do be the very best give it 110 120 130 percent effort mm -hmm. like jack and ron go out there give it hell bye-bye everybody good